Okay. My topic today is posterior, posterior Atlanta actual pedicle screw fixation for pediatric Atlanta dislocation. And my topic is mainly for the ch children uh, less than six years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that et etiology of the pediatric uh, C12 dislocation <coughs> need operation may, uh, mainly include uh, congenital developmental malformation and uh, fracture dislocation. Uh, especially for some some cases in my union and rotate rotate rotatory and uh, rotatory dislocation and fixation and <clears throat> as you know that uh, the difficulties in the, these uh, children they they have they have smaller smaller structure so it result in uh, result uh, the difficulty in is inserting screw, especially in children younger than six years old, and uh, they have soft bow, so that uh, they have poor, poor anti pulling power of screw and easy to lose of the instrumentation. And uh, due, to, due to less autogenous bone, so <clears throat> the, for our surgeons, it have a difficult choice of bone graft. And uh, <clears throat> by reason, by uh, re because of unclosed uh, epiphysis, so they will have the <coughs> uh, probability of e easy spontaneous fusion. And uh, because of children, often they, they can't cooperate it. So, so uh, <coughs> we, for our children, it's, we are difficult, uh, it's difficult for us to do the physical examination, cranial traction, uh, cranial traction or external fixation. Uh, <clears throat> the first case is a 15-month child uh, with uh, Atlanta actual dislocation and uh, odontoid fracture. So we can see that uh, he has only neck pain and caused trauma, a limited movement for, for three weeks, but absence of uh, neurological symptom, symptoms. <clears throat> because the ch child, uh, this child, this boy, feel, feel with, with is a little child that failed to perform the preoperative cranial traction. Pre-op CT and MRI, we can see that he has uh, epiphysis separation and, and separation and the dislocation of C12, but without the, the compression of the spinal cord. And <clears throat> we gave him an accurate preoperative measurement uh, by means of 3D CT reconstruction. Structure. You can see that the uh, lateral mass of C1 is wide enough, uh, but height is uh, 3, 3.25 millimeters. Uh, and uh, about C, uh, C2, the particle is a little, uh, little thin, uh, about 2.3, 2.9, and uh, the height is 2. Point, uh, about 3 millimeters. But I think it, it is enough for me to try to place the C2 particle screw. So I gave him a posterior approach for C1, C1 2 particle screw internal fixation. Uh, <clears throat> from the, the photo, you can see that we, I have placed a C1 2 posterior particle screw of C1 2. And the, during the operation, you can see that after we placed the, the C1 2 screw, uh, I gave him a thorough reduction uh, C1 2. Uh, here is the po uh, post-operative uh, X3 and the CT. You can see that the C1 screw and the C2 screw are in ideal position. And just uh, two days after operation, the, the child recovered well and moved, uh, moved around independently. <clears throat> you can see that he have uh, his, his smell. <clears throat> and uh, about two and a half months post-operation, uh, post uh, give him uh, uh, X3, you can see that and the uh, internal fixator are still are still in ideal position, and the CT we can see that the it has a partial partial bony fusion, uh, partial fusion, and uh, <clears throat> you can see that the C1 particle screw and C2 they are very, they are all okay, and uh, the MRI shows the ideal decompression of the spinal cord. And after six months, we give him a follow-up and see that the internal fixator is still still there, is no problem. And uh, from the CT scan, we can see that the thorough, uh, thorough fusion, bony fusion. And then we, give, we, rem we removed the internal fixator 
and <coughs> they can <coughs> have a, a thorough uh, movement of his neck. And the second case is a five-year-old female with, <coughs> with the old dislo uh, C12 dislocation due to old odontoid odontoid fracture. We can see that a uh, dynamic view. We can see that has a, a dislocation of C12. Uh, from CT, you can see that he had the uh, old <coughs> odontoid to process fracture. And we give him a <coughs> measurement of C1. You can see that it's wide enough and see lateral mass, and the height is wide enough for a 3.5 millimeter screw. Uh, as about C2, you can see that it's a little thin, uh, not uh, no more than three millimeter. But the height is wide enough for a particle screw of 3.5. And so give him <coughs> a successful internal fixation of C12. You can see that. And this, as this case is an old, old fracture, so we give him a, a, a bone fusion. The third case is, is a three year old. <coughs> uh, it's also an odontoid fr fracture. Uh, only ha this patient has only a neck pain and uh, uh, neck limited uh, movement. You can see that uh, this location is very ob obvious. And uh, after, even after the preoperative traction, you can see that they have no, <coughs> no reduction. And so I think he has a little bone fusion. So we, get, we need the anterior, anterior release. So we'll give him an anterior release by transfer approach and then followed by posterior C1 to fixation uh, particle school. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, after 26 months, they came to our hospital for removing the internal fixator. But we, we, <clears throat> we, up, we found that uh, and the anterior, anterior space seems to have had fusion. And uh, from the CT scan, we can see that there's some refusion and the C12 between, <coughs> between the joint and anterior the ADI, they had a, a some refusion. And uh, case four is a one year and a three months uh, boy. Uh, he has a BI, uh, Atlanta dislocation. Mm, he has only neck pain, but he always he held his head with his hand, but absence of neurolo neurological symptoms. On X ray, you can see that the C2 has have go up into the foramen magnum. And the CT scan can see that uh, it's obvious. And <clears throat> go up into the foramen magnum. It's obvious. Uh, from this 3D model, we can see that it's only, only one uh, unilateral unilateral to see a lateral mass and uh, not obvious spinal cord compression, but he had a hydrocephaly. After uh, the skull traction, he has partial reduction. So uh, I think uh, we can perform, perform the posterior surgery, uh, <coughs> cranial cervical fixation is the reconstruction of so the diagnosis is a BI with cranial cervical instability, uh, atlas dysphagia, uh, <clears throat> and a unilateral atlas, uh, cherry malformation, clipial field syndrome, and hydrocephaly. So we performed the posterior surgery for, for him. <clears throat> you can see that it has become an uh, ideal physician. From mm -hmm. the posterior CT, you can see that that uh, have dropped, uh, uh, pre operative the BI is obvious, but uh, after the surgery, he had go, uh, go, uh, go down. The champion, champion line is still, you can see that, we pull out the uh, C2 from the foramen magnum. And here, CT shows the two particle screw and the OC put uh, plate. And here is the we take uh, take out his own or uh, the genius uh, iliac crest uh, bone graph and uh, <clears throat> compare with the preoperative MRI we can see that the 
spinal cord is decompressed already. Uh, here is the just uh, after the operation is 1.8 year, uh, one, one year and eight months. And uh, is the five, four years old, uh, is very, very good. And uh, this year he is, he is nine years old, he comes to our, uh, our hospital again. But he, he, he didn't show me a smell. <laughs> Uh, this is the last follow-up. Follow -up. You can see that uh, the internal fixator is very good, and uh, the dynamic view can still still uh, <coughs> stable. The internal fixator is stable, and the neck neck line is good. Uh, here is show the bone fusion, and uh, but I, I observed that uh, the, from here we can see that the oh, also. Occipital bone had into the cranial fossa, posterior cranial fossa. Here is the uh, just after the operation because the bone is very thin. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, seven, years, seven years later, it has changed. So, it, I think uh, this is different, uh, different with the adult. And uh, fr from here, we can see that. The two particle screw just uh, put after the surgery, you can see that is the ideal position. And uh, seven years, seven years later, the two particle screw have uh, into the vertebral vert canal. So I think uh, from here and uh, here, we can see that uh, the little child, uh, especially for infant and uh, a little child, is different with the adult or, or <clears throat> uh, any other children. So I have the children. So I think for this uh, this patient, uh, we should take out his his nintendo fixator. Uh, it's very important. So it's different with the elder children. Uh, these two groups in include uh, uh, nine children uh, from 2013 to 2020. Uh, you can see that uh, the last uh, two years I gave them uh, nine fusion. Uh, one year and three months, one year and eight months, I'll take out his internal fixator. <clears throat> and I, I introduced the technique of posterior C1 to particle screw for children, especially for uh, yeah, uh, for infant and uh, younger ch children. Uh, <clears throat> as long as there's a, a well-developed um, particle, even if the diameter is less, uh, less than 3.5 millimeter, I think uh, uh, a standard uh, screw uh, can still be inserted for fig uh, for fixation. Uh, when the diameter is diameter of the particle particle is greater than two than two millimeter, <clears throat> just it's just like uh, the, in the scoli scoliosis in children, we can put the screw into the particle. It's, it shows the creeping, uh, creeping, creeping phenomenon. So it's the same in the <coughs> C2 particle. I think it, 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 uh, as, as long as the diameter is greater than two millimeter, I can place the, the particle through safely. The technique of, about the inserting uh, in, a particle through C2 is that you can see that we can see the medial and the R upper edge of the particle, so we can insert the screw under the direct vision. Uh, uh, I will uh, 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 obey the rule of reverse extend, extension line. Uh, as about the C1 particle screw, uh, I, I think as long as the normal lateral mass is observed, it can, I can place a, a standard 3.5 millimeter uh, screw. Up to now, the mini, uh, <coughs> minimum age of C1 screw is one year and three months, as mentioned. It's two year old, three year old, and four year old. You can see that the C1 screw is no problem. Uh, the lateral mass uh, is wide enough for place a uh, standard standard screw. <coughs> How about the techniques inserting the particle screw C1? The entry point of C1 is determined by the successful entry point of C2. Uh, it can <coughs> can draw a vertical line upward at the C C two uh, entry point intersect with C one and then one to two millimeters to the outside, and uh, we I must uh, uh, let uh, two millimeters away from the cranial edge. 
so that it can uh, damage the, the cortex of the sulcus of the vertebral artery. Uh, and the direction uh, generally is uh, uh, in uh, aiming at in what five degree anterior at the, the uh, anterior tubercle of the atlas by the lateral fluoroscopy. And uh, the, uh, if the posterior arch of the atlas is narrow, I will use a high, high speed spur with a, a one millimeter diameter head so that I can insert directly into the lateral mass. I call it a partial transvertical screw uh, I have a, uh, another <coughs> another technique is that I, dissect, I can dissect the upper part of the posterior arch of the atlas and so, can, so, so as to protect the vertebral artery and uh, explore the la lateral mass be below to protect the vert uh, uh, venous plexus. Uh, here I showed the high speed burr is the one millimeter millimeter drill. It's long enough. I'll show you a uh, uh, video. Now I use I use high speed burr with a one millimeter screw insert into the lateral mass directory. And upside, I will use a uh, I will prep eh? You can see there. That's upside. Uh, protect the with uh, VA and uh, uh, down. Down, I will use, uh, use uh, I will protect the venous flexors so that I can use the high speed burr with the one millimeter drill to direct to into, insert into the lateral mass of speed to run. Here is the case of the, the patient. I will use after that drill into the lateral mass. I will use a probe to to try if I have uh, <clears throat> into the have insert into the lateral mass. Here is the partial transpedical screw of atlas. You can see that the up, the lower part of the screw will outside the pedicle of, of C1, but it still have some strength. Because it was limited by the anterior, anterior, anterior fixation in the lateral mass. Lateral mass. Now, it's, uh, the take-home message that a message is that only when surgeons have been skilled in upper uh, elders upper cervical spine procedure will the procedure be performed in children, and you must have performed a lot of uh, adult cases. You can perform. Uh, little children, especially for the children less than six years old. And the preoperative parameters of the screw parts of the atlas and axis are supposed to be accurately mirrored on three three dimensional CT reconstruction. <clears throat> and the good clinical outcomes as uh, observed with posterior Atlanta particle screw fixation for Atlanta actual dislocation children uh, who were younger than six years old. And the, the age is not an absolute uh, limitation. As we know that a lot of surgeons have think that if the children is too young and uh, uh, even uh, when his, uh, his age is less than six years old, uh, perhaps uh, for C1 and C2 uh, practical school is impossible. But in my appearance, I, in my experience, I, see, I think this is not impossible. It's, it, it's, <clears throat> for this group, I performed uh, nine nice children less than uh, six years old, I think it is very successful. And, and occipital cervical fixation should be not uh, should not be considered in patient uh, without con congenital Atlanta occipital fusion deformity, uh, whether adults or, or children. Because the atlas is large enough to insert the, the screw. And in children with, with C1 to dislocation but caused by fresh fracture, Continuous cranial traction followed by external fixation of Halovast uh, best therapy. I think uh, it's the, in most cases, I will use uh, uh, external fixation of, for, for, for them. Uh, it's the best uh, therapy, I think. Uh, only a, a small, uh, only a few cases I use the internal fixation, especially fresh, fresh uh, fracture. Uh, and uh, 
when the uh, seven to this location uh, uh, so <clears throat> and I will use the if I give them a few uh, give them an internal fixation for this young old in fresh structure I will give them a non-fusion and I will take out the internal fixation later after six months and the transoral release is sometimes necessary for some patients of rigid and uh, atlanta actual dislocation thank you very much